Hey, hey, what's up guys? So today we're gonna to talk about Vertex ID. I kind of mentioned it in passing yesterday in my previous tip video, and I kind of feel like I should get into it a little bit deeper. Before we can explain Vertex ID, first we have to understand what is a 3D model, right? So I've got a pair of headphones here. This is from my Spider-Verse character, and I'm gonna export this out as an OBJ. So we're gonna to go to File, Export Selection, and we're just gonna call it Headphones. Okay, if we pull up this Headphones OBJ right here, I literally can open up a text editor, so like Notepad, right? And I can literally drag this 3D model into the text editor, all right? And this is what an OBJ file is. It's a set of numbers and data that make up the 3D model. So let's just kind of look at this kind of closely. So this might seem boring to you guys, but this is kind of the fun part. I know this isn't like a flashy like looking video, but don't be, don't be confused or distracted by all that flashy stuff you see on YouTube. This is the stuff that matters. Like this is the knowledge, okay? So here we go, we got, get, and they're not labeled. All these Vs, these are all the vertices in your model and their respective coordinates. So you have X, Y, Z, okay? So that's a 3D value. So there's a vertice for every point on the model, okay? So that's what all the Vs are. You can see there's quite a few. And then after a while, it stops being V and it becomes VT. So VT is vertex texture. So as I've explained in previous videos, a texture coordinate is just the 3D model, but mapped to a 2D coordinate system. So that's why there's only two, there's only U and V. So kind of like Battleship, right? We're just working on a 2D plane. So that's the vertex texture. As we scroll down, we'll start to get into VN and that's vertex normal. So that's the normal direction of vertices. Vertices have normals as well. And then as you get down, you'll get into the last section with the F and the F stands for face. And I'm going to explain this a little bit more. So each one of these F's is made up of a bunch of numbers here. And each one of these is the vertex position, the vertex texture coordinate and the vertex normal. And as you can see, there's three groups of it in this particular F here. So one, two and three. That means that this particular face right here is a triangle because it's referencing these three points and it's saying within these three points, we're gonna have the first face right here. And that's all it is. That's all uh, an OBJ model is. So let's say for example, I was to bring all of this stuff into Google spreadsheets. So I'm gonna bring VT. So I'm gonna bring all the Vs, I'm gonna copy all this. And if I paste this in, so these are all the vertex coordinates you can see how many vertices this model has and it's going, it's going all the way until 17,419. That's how many vertices this model has. Now, if we click into Maya and I click in here, and if you look at the top left, you'll see that this model has 17,419 vertices. So just like the Google spreadsheet is saying, so that is all a 3d model is. So if you actually want to see the vertices and their IDs on your model, you can click your model, go to display polygons, turn on vertices like that. And just for the sake of demonstration, we're actually going to bump up the size of the vertices, make it like an eight. So they're huge. And then we're going to go back to polygons, component ID and vertices. Now this is going to get a little crazy looking, but I just want to show you for demonstration. When I click on this, now you can see these are the actual counts. Okay. These are the IDs of each and every vertice. Like we don't, when we're modeling something, we're not thinking about this stuff, but this is how the computer sees it. This is what it's calculating. This is how stuff in computer graphics is done. And again, each one of these points. So let's say like this point right here, this vertice, what is this? This is vertice 12,254. And if I go back up to my spreadsheet, you'll find vertex 12,254 right here. Okay. So that's that vertice right there. So every vertice is on a list. So yesterday I spoke about how vertex number can change and you don't want to do that because it can really affect blend shapes. And I'm going to demonstrate that for you right now. Okay. So here we are in ZBrush and let's say you're using a typical workflow, which is you use Maya, Blender, 3D Max, and also use a little bit of ZBrush for your sculpting work. So typically what you'll do is let's say I want to make some modifications just for the hell of it. Like we're just going to move this here. Okay. Like Let's say we just want to get a little bit of wonkiness. That's fine. That's all I need to do for now. I'm going to export this model back out and this is going to create a blend shape. Hello. Okay. So now back in Maya, I can reimport that blend shape and use this. So all I have to do is I click here, click here, deform blend shape. And now there will be 
a blend shape slider that allows me to deform my original model into the new model. The reason that this works is because the vertex IDs haven't changed. They've simply changed position. There's nothing that the computer doesn't understand. It simply takes the vertices, these exact vertices here on the top, and it moves it to the new location. They don't have a new identity. They simply have a new position. So that's something that Maya can understand. That's a blend shape. However, let's say you're in ZBrush and you start doing some more intense stuff. Let's say you start subdividing. That little act right there of that little subdivision one to sub subdivision two, that can sometimes create issues for you depending on the model. Not always, but sometimes. So let's just divide it a couple of times. So I've divided it four times. We're up to 1.1 million vertices now. Now let's say for whatever reason, I've subdivided it just once and I'm gonna delete lower and I'm gonna delete higher. So this is a higher subdivision. And then let's say I decide to reconstruct subdiv. So this is gonna get back my subdivision one. So it's the exact same poly count. It even looks very similar to what I had before. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna export this model out. This is gonna be headphones broken, okay? Not to ruin the surprise. This model looks almost identical, right? It almost looks exactly the same. What could possibly be wrong? But let me now try to do another blend shape, deform blend shape. and you're gonna see that it doesn't know what the hell it's doing. And the reason is because if we take a look again at the vertices, the vertex IDs have changed. So let's take a look at like this little point. This is something that's easy to identify. This, and on the, my original model, this is vertice 14,666. If I click on this new model, this is now no longer 14,666. This is now 9,000 and 70 it looks like so as you can see the vertex have completely changed and so when i'm doing the blend shape it's simply taking the vertex ids and being like oh we have a new position but because it's a different order oh this is this looks terrible because the vertices are in a different order it has no more structure so it kind of looks like it because there's a good chance that you know probability that some some vertices will be roughly in the same position as they were overall this is this model is destroyed now there is actually a way to get that vertice identity back, okay? So like this is kind of crazy and I wasn't actually thinking of explaining this, but actually I will. All right, so in Maya, there is a tool under mesh called transfer vertex order. And it does exactly what it sounds like. It transfers the vertex order of one object to another. And I'm gonna show you how to use it, but there's a couple of things that I also have to explain. So one of the other catches with vertex order is that if it has multiple objects, so as you can see my, my headphones here, are made up of multiple like smaller objects. They're not all like one piece. And this tool works better on stuff that is all one piece. So if I turn the vertex IDs on and this is the mesh as it is right now, you can see like we're in the 7,000s here for the vertices, 3,000 over here. And then I decide to separate it. The vertex IDs get recalculated because now this is no longer one big object with all the different vertices. Now we're looking at smaller pieces. So really Maya is just seeing this piece in isolation. So naturally it's not gonna have all 17,000 vertices anymore. It actually renumbered the vertex IDs. So if I turn the vertex IDs back on, you can see that we're no longer in the 7,000s on this side and the 3,000s on this side. This whole object only has 1,096 vertices. So the vertex ID has changed. So one of the problems with the, the vertex order transfer tool that I'm gonna show you is that it's not gonna be able to handle transferring the vertex IDs of all these different components over to the other. So the only way that it will do it is if I actually separate the meshes and then do it piece by piece. And then potentially when I recombine it, it'll have uh, the same vertex order. So I just wanna emphasize that this tool really is meant for a mesh that is one solid piece, not multiple pieces like these headphones. This is actually a terrible example. But that tool is very good when it comes to like a character base mesh. So if you have multiple characters and they all share the same base mesh and you want to transfer the vertex ID, that's the perfect time to use it. But for this example, let's just go ahead. I'm going to separate this mesh. So now I really just want to uh, transfer the vertex ID from one object to another one at a time. So we're going to have to go in here and I'm just going to, yeah, you guys can see it, right? Okay. So I'm going to go into mesh transfer vertex order. Select first, second, and third vertex of the single polygon on source mesh. So I'm gonna pick this uh, poly right here. So I'm gonna select one, two, three, and it's good to go in a clockwise order so that you remember. And now it says, now select the first, second, and third vertex of the corresponding polygon on the destination mesh to transfer the vertex order. So now I'm gonna go over to the destination mesh. 
And again, the vertices should be this one. One. Oh, I have to delete history. Let's try it again. So let's do the whole thing again. Transfer vertex order. One, two, and three. And now in the destination mesh, one, two, and three. Okay. So I don't know if you saw it, and really you have to look in the lower left hand side for the tool for the uh, what the command prompt said. But now these actually have the same vertex order, and we want to confirm that. We can just turn this back on. Vertex IDs, vertex IDs. Okay, so let's look, right? So 810, 811, 670. 810, 811, 670. And really the ultimate test is to do a blend shape. So we're gonna select the original, select the destination, blend shape. Now we're gonna see and see, look, this is this is kind of that difference between the original model and then after the ZBrush. So as you can see, the Vertex ID isn't doing the broken thing, it's actually working the way we wanted it to. So you'd have to go through and do this for every single component. In this case, there's like, I don't know, 20 objects in this piece of these headphones. So you'd have to go through piece by piece and transfer the vertex order. But my point is really just to say that it is possible to transfer the vertex order, okay? So that's it guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully that kind of explains vertex IDs. There's more to talk about, but that is kind of the gist of it. And if you didn't know about it before, it's just good to know now. Thanks for watching.